right, let's get our planning and development meeting started here in attendance tonight. We've got Councilwoman Linda Dodd, Councilman Danny Ford, Mayor Martinez, myself, Natalie, and Danny. And our planning director, uh, planning and development director, Tim Prater. So I guess first thing we need to do is make a motion to adopt, to adopt the agenda. Do we have the agenda? I don't know what the agenda is. It was emailed to you. Well, yeah. I don't have it either. Yeah. It's on the city's Facebook page, what you mean. Okay, well, we've got it online here, so let's go ahead and get going. Um, so, so Tim, do you want to come up and present, um, talk about code enforcement? I'll talk about Monday I did a ride along with our code enforcement officer, so I'll talk about that. And I guess we'll just talk about what, what we need for this department and what we can do. We'll make a recommendation back to the council at the next meeting. So just for an update, as of today, code enforcement has wrote 178 citations since January 1st. Uh, I was asked by council to bring a recommendation to increase code enforcement. And my recommendation was to add a code enforcement officer and an admin assistant. Um, and then that was said, we would discuss it here tonight. Um, do y'all have any questions of what you want? I sort of kind of, um, so when I rode, just to catch y'all up, when I rode with Josh on Monday, he's our code enforcement officer. First of all, he, whoever hired him, he's a great hire. He's a good hire. He's a good guy. He knows his stuff. He's like the perfect, his personality fits in for this position very good. And he represents the city very well. So we, what we did um, on his list that day was to visit the, some businesses on the um, Harrison Road side of town. So what, basically what he does, he has a, a clipboard and he, he has a sheet of, of what he's going to do that day, the businesses um, or addresses he visits. And then he, as he pulls up to each one, he pulls out a piece of paper that's a form. It's a tri-form. Um, one copy goes to the city, one goes to the violator, one goes to the court. Yes. So if it's it, like a carbon if it, copy. Yeah, if it reaches the point of citation, then that, that first violation notice has to be attached to the citation and go to court. Yes. Okay. So he uh, basically, it's all, he checks the boxes a lot of, but he, ha he does have to write their, their name, their address, and fill out some. So it's a lot, it was a lot of handwriting in my observation. So, um, and then if they're not there, he comes back to the car and he has to do a little more handwriting and he goes back and he physically tapes the copy to the door. Okay, so this, y'all Yeah, the ones who haven't paid their business licenses. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's the infraction? So then what he'll do after the, around lunchtime, he says he comes back to the office, does his lunch break, and starts doing his paperwork. So I guess there's a lot. I didn't, do, I didn't sit with him on paperwork, but I guess there's a lot of paperwork that he has to come back and do. Right. Every, every notice he writes, he has to log into the software. Uh, any pictures he takes, he has to log all that into the software. Um, and then that's what we use if he has to take them to court. You know, he has to print all that out attach it to the citation, turn it into court to log into their system. So, yeah. Okay, yep. And so when I, and Brian with him asking him, what, you know, Josh, what do you feel like you need? If you had a wish list, what would you need? And he kept, he kept telling me about a thermal printer. He mentioned that several times as we were riding around. So he um, said he definitely could use a thermal printer. However, he's um, very conscientious of not spending money, so he hasn't asked for that yet. But I think he said you and him have talked about um, maybe putting a computer in there and, and kind of outfitting the, right. his, his truck. So at bare minimum, I think he needs some kind of equipment in there to do that that keeps him on the road um, visiting as well as um, maybe lighten up some of his handwriting paperwork. I'll order one tomorrow. I'll get ordered. In a printer? In a printer? Okay. Now, so what can he, is there something he can do in the office where he's just printing the stuff out versus sitting there in front of the business handwriting it? 
I don't know if there's is it software mobile. It is, and if he had a printer in his truck, then he would be able to type that information in versus handwriting it. Uh, yeah, we can. You know, we'll get the one thing team. we would have to look into is if it makes duplicate copies, because like I said, once he writes that notice of violation, if it goes to court, he has to turn in that notice of violation in with his court citation. Because uh -huh. <clears throat> that just shows that, you know, we issued him a notice and gave him time for correction before we issued him the citation. Yep, okay. But Tim and I and Kyle will see if we can get thermal firm. I know the police officers have them. I know the fire department uses mobile terminals. So it's something that can be easily done. And I don't know, there's forms. Do, is, do they make one where you can just peel off sticky on the back? I'll have to check and see. I'm not sure. I don't think they do in the, like, the tri-forms because one gets left with the violator. Mm -hmm. One he keeps for his records, and then the other one is for court. So I don't know if they make it. you talking about as far as attaching it to the door or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they would make that in a tri-form. But if we go to the printer in the truck, then I'm almost sure they wouldn't have stickies on them, you know, mm -hmm. if you're printing it out. Hey, Tim, would that expedite? I mean, how, how much would that expedite the process for Josh? Uh, I mean, it would probably save him a little time. Uh, we would have to look, I mean, you know, typing it in versus writing it out. I mean, it might save a little time. I don't think it's going to save a whole lot because he still has to type it. You know, like the software the police department has, they can take your license and they can scan your license and it'll populate all the information into their computer. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't, we don't do that. You know? And legally we can't. That's mm -hmm. GCIC rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I have a business no okay. now I, the new software the city's getting everything will be integrated once we get that new software but the software we have at the moment we use a completely separate software for code enforcement than the rest of the city uses so yeah this, yes yeah this time we're going to do a major upgrade citywide uh, that's happening as we speak so is that the tyler tyler technology we're going mm -hmm. smart vision but what tim's referring to is something different court uses something totally different that they have to use for their gcic so it's you got all these different entities that you have to use some of their software set so but tyler will limit some of this work uh, we'll have to buy a new computer regardless because he doesn't have a mobile terminal so it, you just can't we just don't go buy computers and stick them in the car kyle has to get computers that are made for vehicles um because of the vibrations correct right but it'll be similar to what the police and the fire department uses but tyler i would imagine would integrate to that they have a mobile application as well thank yeah, you i was about to ask so yeah. if you and if Melody, you want to speak we'll like pass the microphone because yeah. this is on youtube and so can hear you yeah. <laughs> so um Lisa, y'all were only concerned about the ones that had not paid their business license? I'm not. That's more of a question for Tim, but I think it's because... Correct. It's Every year after April 1st, because uh, state law says we can't touch it till after April 1st, we get a list from the occupational tax clerk of the businesses that hasn't renewed their license. So code enforcement will go out and issue them a notice of violation, you know, check to make sure the business is still open. Uh, once they receive the notice, they have 10 days to come get their business license. If they don't, then they get a court citation. And so when he makes this visit, does he actually go into the business to yes. talk to the owner? Yes. Okay. If they're there. Yeah. I, I stayed in the car, but okay. he did. Yeah. If they were open and. Then... Right. Yeah. And then in past experience, after April the 1st, uh, how many have come and paid their license like last year well like you know most of them do 
uh, he does issue court citations, and a lot of them will come get their business license before they go to court. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, and it varies the number, you know. And if the owner's not there, then you can't take the trip back? If, if the business is not open, but he can tell there's still a business there, he will post the notice, like, on the door. Uh, but, yeah, if, if, if the owner's not there, but they're open and they just have an employee, he leaves it with the employee. And he posts, he takes a picture of the post close up and he yes. steps back. And then when he gets back here, that's part of his admin work is, right. is to download all those pictures and, okay. and, or I guess, upload them to the file or the log. Yes. Yeah. And let me just say this for the public. So one, one officer, he's treated like an officer. Um, as a city manager or as the director, we cannot tell an officer that writes citations to write someone's citation. It's at their discretion. The time limit is at their discretion. If you take speeding, if you speed and the officer does not write you a citation, there's nothing that I nor the police chief can do. It's at the officer's discretion. So these 30-day time limits is at Josh's discretion. So if that's something the committee would like to see changed to, say, two weeks, then we need to put it in the ordinance because then – it's a law, a, a city ordinance that he can only give two weeks, but right now it's at his discretion. And a, the other thing, difference between a police officer and code enforcement is when you get put over a police officer, you're there. You have your information, your driver's license. Mm -hmm. Josh, a lot of times he's coming back, and a lot of times Q Public is not updated, mm -hmm. and he'll send it to the previous owner when, you know, they don't live there any longer. So he runs into that, and then he has to make another trip. Sometimes we have to do certified mail. It can take get lost in the mail so there's a huge time frame so one case is not as simple as officer getting your license and issuing a citation it's done within 30 minutes his could take week, two, weeks weeks yeah like in the meantime you're still getting as elected officials getting a phone call their grass is yep. high their refrigerator this or that so i see the frustration from the council but with, legally we don't have that information readily available like a police officer does so he has to come back and if they're not there research so I just want to I mean, just that. for an example, if he has a code violation, let's say at the Kroger Shopping Center, the owners of Kroger Shopping Centers in Texas. So he has to send them a certified letter and he has to give them enough time to comply, counting in the time that it's going to take the letter to get there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it can one case, you know, it can take sometimes two weeks. To contact somebody because they're out of state and i will say even though he had his list on the way over there we stopped and did a um weeds and tall grass mm -hmm. violation mm -hmm. it's at a person's home and pulled two signs so it's not he doesn't he doesn't have a he, he can't keep up with a rhythm or a steady cadence he's pulled in different directions i guess yes i mean our code enforcement book or the city code book is this thick and that's what he enforces and in between that, he might get a call from the water department and say somebody cut a lock off a meter. So then he has to stop all that and go there. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know. And his vision was to have two code enforcement officers, one working this side of town, one working the other side of town. So if he does get a water theft call and it's on this side of town, they call this guy, not him, to stop at what he's doing, go over there and do that and come back and start over. Well, the issue I see is, you know, what was brought up at the council was y'all was wanting more done than what's being done. And like I said, he's wrote 178 citations since January 1st. If y'all want more done than what's being done, I, I need some funding for it because I need another body. And past years, code enforcement from y'all was not a big, not say a big issue, but not like it is now where since we got C Click Fix, this is a reporting app, we get them daily. Um, so if you want more done, then yeah, you're going to have to hire somebody. But, you know, look, my issue is, say, parking in the grass. These people have been here 40, 50 years and they've been parking on grass. And now all of a sudden we're telling them they got to park on gravel, concrete, or asphalt, which is fine. That's what y'all say that's what we're going to do. But, and then, you know, the issue was, well, they should have it paved. I don't want gravel. Well, if they were built a house in 1960 before code enforcement in the city of Loganville was established, you can park on the dirt road because they're grandfathered in. I think the issue is we want to make everybody not grandfathered. Well, if they're grandfathered in legally, there's nothing you can do to make them comply because at the time, 
-hmm. if they were legal. So a lot of these houses where they have dirt roads, there's nothing we can do to enforce it. Even if you write a law today, it would only affect from here on. It doesn't does not go backwards. So I think educating the public is a big deal. Like, you know, we get them for the shutters or a different color on the house. Um, there's tires in the front. Those are things we cannot legally enforce because it's unsightly to you, but it may be art to them. So a lot of that the citizens do not like, but it's just law. Well, aesthetics is follow. not a code violation. And right. Give you another example, political signs. There's a sign down the road that's been there since the elections, November. State law says you cannot touch a political sign unless it's in the right way. If it's on somebody's property, you can stay at the end of the time. Legally, there's nothing that city council nor code enforcement nor the local police can enforce because it's a state law. We cannot supersede state law. So educating the public is a big thing. Um, but, you know, here lately, code enforcement is a hot topic. I talk to Tim daily about issues. I'm sure y'all get them. Um, Multiple times daily. <laughs> but we are working as hard as we can. But if, if y'all want code enforcement to triple, then we're going to have to hire another body. Now, what did we do for code enforcement? Because it seems like since I've been on council, we um, we did add code enforcement officer. So what did we do before then? We, we didn't, we didn't add a code enforcement officer. No, we, uh, so my, we've always had building, a code enforcement? My, well, I think Jim Mays was our first code enforcement officer. This was okay. back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, so... My code enforcement officer or my building inspector moved up to help me do plan reviews. The code enforcement officer moved up to do building inspections, and then we hired a code enforcement officer. Okay, so we didn't add that position. It's no. not a new position. Okay. Yes. Okay. And also, Loganville Police can enforce because it is a city code, but do we want them right in tall grass when they got speeders and others more more emergencies i would say than right in the grass but just so you know Loganville police like parking in the street that's a code violation something tim doesn't do that's something Loganville police do so on those we had to transfer them to the Loganville police department All right because that's actually a traffic violation uh -huh. so code enforcement can't do traffic violations so how do you feel about with the courts opening back up do you think that's going to Take care of some of this? I do believe, um, like I said, last council meeting, uh, we were seeing five to ten people via Zoom. Now we're in 130. So currently we're at five months behind. So if he writes a ticket today, it's five months down the road. They go to court. Once a, I don't know if y'all explain this, but once I write, say I write Ms. Janice a citation to go to court, I cannot have any more contact with her for that mm -hmm. issue until the judge decides and a lot of times the judge says, go cut your grass. There's nothing we can do. If he dismisses it, nothing we can do. At that time, it's in the judge's hand. Um, the judge can fine him up to $1,000, make him cut the grass. A lot of times they go to court and the judge says, well, did you cut your grass? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, case dismissed. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Tim? That's correct. So um, Now, in the past, I don't know how the – the new judge is going to handle that. Josh has only had like one case in front of him. Uh, he's still got four cases pending from last year because court was shut down. And that's so. kind of my thought is I think we need to give, <clears throat> when the court's opening back up, give it time to work on itself, like catch it up. It may be revisit in six months if we're five months behind. But, I mean, he doesn't write that many court citations. Most violations come into compliance within their time frame. Uh, and if they're even trying to comply and just need a little more time, he'll give them an extension. You know, if they need another couple of weeks to get it cleaned up, but they're working on getting it cleaned up, you know, he'll give them an extension on it. Court citations is our last resort. Mm -hmm. You know, we want voluntary compliance. We don't want to have to take you to court. Uh, so, you know. He don't write a court citation for every notice of violation he writes. And a, another issue, Melanie Long, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up because she brought the property up on Main Street. I don't know the address, the Green Building, 260. Um, 
once they buy a permit, building permit, they have up to 10 correct me if I'm wrong, six months mm -hmm. to do something. So correct. once that permit's issued, there's nothing we can do. Now, you as elected officials can change the ordinance to say, we're going to do three months. But that affects all building permits. That affects your DR Hortons. So they have three months essentially to build a house or a deck or a remodel. But we do have in that ordinance two extensions. Yes. For six months. Yes. So it's a year total. Yes. So they can do an automatic extension for another six months, and that property can sit for one year as is with a permit, if, which drives people crazy. Which we have the option of doing an extension. Uh, but just to clarify on that, once you get your permit, if you do absolutely no work, your permit's good for six months. Now, if you're in the process of doing construction, your permit will run until you get that construction done. But if there's any lapse of time of a six-month period, your permit expires. So if you build in the house, if you get a permit and you build in the house, you know, it's not like you have six months to build your house. As long as you're continuing working, then your permit will stay good until you're completed. Uh, but if you get a permit and do absolutely nothing, it expires in six months. Yes, yeah, so we can, <clears throat> you as a committee can make a recommendation that we go before council and cut that three months. Because like Tim said, as long as they're putting work towards it, we will give them time to complete it. But it saves people that just buy a permit and does nothing, and it drives the public crazy. We're saying, well, we'll give them three months. If nothing's done in three months, then they get another notice violation. So that's something you can do to change. But right now in our ordinance that we follow as employees that y'all set, it's six months with an extension. So that solves that issue, but it doesn't solve people parking on the grass. Well, the, now that you cannot park on grass, so now it's gravel, concrete, or asphalt. So if you go around town, there's a lot of people with gravel. And a lot of people called and complained. He can't, write that many. he can't write enough tickets for people to park on the Yeah, because it happens daily. daily. Right. And, right. And a lot of times people will call in and say, my neighbor's parking on his grass. Right. And he'll go over there and there's nobody there. Well, if he don't see it, he can't write a violation for it. Right. You know? I mean, you know, if, if people... If they're parking on the grass, he can. If they're parking on gravel then they're in compliance with the ordinance. So, no, he can't. I'll probably see 10 on the way home. Guaranteed. Yeah, and, and a lot of time that's that's the issue. You know, people are at work, but other their neighbors will call in and say, hey, my neighbor's parking on the grass, and he goes over there, there's nobody home. Well, they get off work at 6 o'clock, he gets off work at 5, and they park on the grass. And that's what I'm saying. If we hire somebody... Unless y'all say we're going to have around the clock code enforcement, uh, you know, the time he from eight to five, and, you know, he's he gets here at eight, he gets his report, and I see him gone, and then he'll come back at lunch and he'll do things, check in. Um, but I can tell you that after that meeting with Councilman Bowling had with Tim and myself, I gave him a directive: Josh, you start a one in the town and you work your way across. And you know, I think in one day he wrote twenty six violations in Huntington Ridge. So work's being done, but also just realize at 6 o'clock, when they see it or take the picture and send it to us, it's over from 8 to 5. And then a lot of times I go around the city and see banner signs, and I'll take a picture with a date on it, and I'll send it to Tim, and he'll go out there on Monday and say, look, you had these over the weekend. You cannot have them. But it's got to be, Tim says, it's got to be time stamped and dated from a city representative. So when he's, a lot the when he's in Huntington Ridge, he's not on Lee Burton. You know what I mean? Hey, Tim. Because I only got one. <laughs> Correct. Going back to the permit, say somebody wants to add a garage in their house and, you know, uh, they don't have the funds, but they got the permit and they wait six months. How do we know that they're not working on it? And Because so they're not calling in any inspections for their work. Okay. So throughout. Yeah. Throughout so the garage, if we have a permit in. we've issued. And nothing's been done in six months. We'll go check. You go check because you know after six months your permit's expired. We're closing it out. You know.
But she just said Teresa Lane, so the public can hear. And I will tell you, he has been to Teresa Lane. He has wrote people's citations and probably the person you're referring to. Um, Because I got a phone call from his son. Blessing me out. So, yes, we're hitting those. and Because I've told Josh, I don't care who calls you. I'm your boss. You will, if it's a violation, you write a citation or notes a violation. You work with them, though. So, but when he goes there and he doesn't see nothing, legally there's nothing we can do. But, and, and I mean, Tim, I don't know if you talk about this, but it has to be visible from the road, public right away. We can't look over fences because I know that was one of the issues I was told. Well, just go to their backyard. Well, I can't. Josh, by law, can only go from the road, path of travel, driveway to the front door. He cannot go to the side of the house, back of the house, or anything. If there's a fence up, and there's parking on the grass. There's nothing we can do because it's behind a fence. If we, a lot of them are pictures from backdoor neighbors. Nothing I can do about it. Legally, the law says that. So our hands are tied as well. But it's just, you know, we're going to get there, but it's going to take some time. It, it didn't. They've been doing this for 50 years now, and we can't fix it in one year. If I had 10 officers, I could. So just know that it's one person. so the council says to tim tell, tell us what you need he says i need a person minimum a person so, and we just spent last hour or so with you guys and looking over the budget budget wise what do y'all think natalie <laughs> i already know <laughs> the answer but i know the answer but go ahead so everybody can go well my focus on this budget is infrastructure and capital improvements if i do one employee it's a hundred thousand dollars he doesn't make $100,000, but time benefits, vehicle, clothes, salary, insurance, retirement, it's $100,000. Let's call it 80, 80 to 100000 depending on the salary. That's a third of my money that I plan to spend elsewhere that's gone. But so weighing the, the need, where would you put the need? Code enforcement well, or If capital? I could just interject before he answers that question. <laughs> Tim knows my answer. I didn't come to y'all begging for another employee. I said, if y'all want to put code enforcement as a priority in the city, this is what I need. I think Josh does a great job. I mean, he's out every day going as fast as he can go, but he's only one person. If y'all want more done than what he is able to accomplish, then I need another person. 100% agree. You did not come to the council asking for that. 100% agree. And yes, if we could clone Josh, it'd be perfect. But <laughs> <laughs> he talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his stuff, though. <laughs> so that's a great answer, Jim. So I would say the council is your, what you see most important, replacing 30, 20 year old equipment or power another code enforcement because I can't do both. It's that simple. Because I'm not raising taxes. We're going to have a rollback rate. I'm planning on it. Um, it's going to be the same budget as last year, or I should say this year. But we're just shifting the money from other places to capital improvements. Have you guys had the chance yet to sit with not Danny yet. over the capital the needs? Situation. Would you tell us, oh, that's loud. Would you tell us what the capital improvements are that we would be trading off for a code enforcement? S officer so not to get too far because the rest of the council hasn't heard but yes to answer your question um vehicles in the general fund uh, tractors that right now we don't have that don't work um vehicles is a big one fire department it's um extrication equipment forty thousand uh, dollars police department is another vehicle they they got two in this new budget they would like to have two more um because of what I tell them, we have 130 vehicles, and buying two a year, four a year, you're not going to replace them within 10 years. Um, Talked to Fleet today and asked him about the vehicle. He said, I think I'm going to replace your charger that you had as fire chief. When I bought it, it was used. It was in 2008. I bought it in 2011, I think. It was used with 44,000 miles. Now it has 160,000 miles on it. You know, I said, well, we're not going to replace it because there's other vehicles that are worse. Um, so those are some, some of the things in the general fund, mostly vehicles and equipment. 
the worst is the water fund, which is not affecting Tim because there's two different funds, but that is major uh, suit water and sewer lines that need to be upgraded. Um, but those are in the millions. Um, capital improvement plan, CIP is what I refer to it is. I'll give you an example, I'll tell them. Chris Yancey submitted one last year for five years. It was $64 million in improvements. There's no way we can do $64 million. There's no way we can do 10% of that. I'm looking at doing 500000 a year. We'd like to do a million a year, but there's no way we can afford it financially without doing a loan, which I don't like to borrow money as much as them. But those are some of the projects we're looking at. We, we've got to start buying vehicles in mass. Because we're, we're... Danny, where are we at fire truck-wise? Is that coming down the road that we're going to have to purchase? It is, but that's already planned for. Okay. Because your great city manager planned that in 2018 with SPLOST. Okay. But we have a million and a half in public safety for the fire department to purchase a fire truck. Okay. So I'm not, you know, worried about a fire truck because we have money for that. The police department has a million and a half for equipment. No, no, I'm sorry. It's a million each, right? I'm sorry. Natalie was like, no. It's two million in public safety. So by law, I have to spend it in public safety. Now, it'll be at the chief's discretion where they would like to sit. It may be vehicles. It may be a combination of safety, gear, equipment. I see bought uh, police cars, which the last ones we bought were out of SPLOS and a fire truck. Because Tim, Cap, or Chief Johnson is begging for a fire truck. But we're still paying on the one from 2015. So what I'm hearing Tim say is that if y'all want to focus on code enforcement, this is what I need. What I'm hearing Danny say is his needs are in other areas at the moment. So can we just go down here and say, Ray, what? how do you feel? Capital improvement. Capital improvement. Danny. Yeah, same here. Linda. Okay. All right. Would y'all have any more questions? You want to keep talking about this? Are we good? I just like stress. I mean, it's, it's a time issue with Josh. It takes weeks to do one case. He's done 100, what'd you say, 178 78 cases. So trust me, he's out there. Send those requests in. We'll get to them. But if nothing is there when we get there, we cannot do nothing. And I would say, what'd you say, Sam? 40% of what we get, we cannot legally enforce. So, but something y'all think about is the permits. Um, the six months, if you want to change it three months, get rid of the, the renewal. We can do that. Um, I know one thing was gravel. We were asked to look at gravel because we want to get rid of that. But I think, Tim, I don't know if you reported on this Monday or not, but gravel is allowed through most municipalities. I yes. think one was John Creek. No, it was uh, Brookhaven. Brookhaven does not allow it. But <clears throat> the ones that we have done it, and a lot of them on Lee Bird Road have put gravel down. It may be covered in grass, but it's still gravel. They're legal. But if we change it to asphalt and concrete, they would be grandfathered in. So. And you also have to remember, if you ride down Covington Street, there's 10 houses that have dirt driveways. Right. I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. Logan Mill is not Peachtree City. You know, our average income is not a half a million dollars a year. Yeah. The only other comment I have, Danny, would be when we talked about doing the printer and the, maybe the computer in the car, is that something that we can actually do? Like I said, I'll do that tomorrow. That's okay. my limit. Okay. And that should help mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. And the only other thing I want to say this for the public is, you know, Josh is like a police officer, except for he doesn't have no way to protect himself. And he has been threatened multiple times. My fear is he's going to get shot. So much that I asked the police department to give us a, a vest, which he wears now. He wears a camera for his protection and also for court. But it just happened, Tim made me aware of a code enforcement officer who got shot and killed because he went to the guy's house and shot him to the door. You do not understand how upset people get when you come there and say, hey, clean your stuff up. Right. And you know, when you, when you go to somebody's house and you walk up and you knock on their door, you don't know what's on the other side of that door. You don't know what kind of day that person's having. Their spouse might have just left them. Their house might be getting foreclosed on. They might have just done a lot of cocaine. You don't know what's on the other side of that door. 
and the only protection he has is his vest and his distance he puts between him and that door after he knocks on it. Mm-hmm. So, and he does have a radio. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're getting shot at, I yeah. mean. There's nothing to do. <laughs> you're more well, worried, about, say, more worried I, about running than mashing that button. <laughs> I say that extremely sincere because I, I do fear for that because I cannot tell you what people say to him in some of these places of Loganville. Loganville is not Loganville I grew up in. And I don't mean that mean or nothing. It's not the people that – you know, Loganville, I knew everybody. Now you go to some of these subdivisions, I don't know who these people are. They move from here to there. They do not like being told about how to keep their property. So pray to God we never have that happen. But it's a, it was so much concerning that I directed, please get us a vest for him. Mm-hmm. So just work with us and we'll – do what we can, but he has been given a directive. I want to see you. I want to burn the wheels off that vehicle. So much you got in a wreck. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, and please make sure he knows we're appreciated. No one's questioned him that we don't think he's slacking at all. That's not, not in question at all. Thank you. I can tell you that right now. Well, as far as I'm me too. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> well, I have a response from my little speech that I made at the council meeting the other night. Uh, and, you know, I don't think anybody in the world loves this town any better than Harold and I. And we've been here forever. And I try so hard not to complain because I think we have some wonderful employees. So. But we have been we have been asking for help for a couple of places for over ten years. And in fact, one of the other city managers made a picture one Sunday afternoon at my house. And I'm going to just make this real, I'll try to make this real short. The house that I was complaining about with all the commodes and everything in the backyard that we have to look at when we're sitting in ours. I guess he read what the nice lady in the Tribune wrote because he said he came over. No, he did not. He called me. I'm telling Phil. And he said, I want to tell you, as soon as I can, I'm going to get that mess cleaned up. I said, well, I really would appreciate that. I said, you know, we don't want to complain about our neighbors because we live here and we want to work with you. I said, but, you know, we've done everything but beg you to do something down there. And I said, and and that's all we're asking to do is clean up. He said, well, you know, I'm so, I said, listen, anybody that owns as much property as you do and and people pay you rent every month, Thousands of dollars, I know, I know. I said, you can hire somebody to clean that up. Man, here will hire somebody every other week to cut our grass. Okay, Monday, I was out working in my yard. You know, the house on the other side where I told you that nobody's been living for three years? Tim and I have talked about this several times. The man is in a nursing home. His brother-in-law has been cutting grass. Well, his little sister walked, I say she's 88. She walked up to our house Monday and she said, I'm gonna apologize to you folks for this mess down here. She said, I know y'all are just sick of it, but we're trying to take care of this. And she said, I've called the zoning people in Loganville several times and asked them to please. She said, my brother said, if I go in that house, He'll have me locked up. But yet she's the only person that can take care of this. She said, that house is so nasty and it stinks so bad that my husband won't let me go in and clean it up. But my brother told me if I did go in and move anything, that he would have me sued. But they're taking care of his house. Anyway, I felt so sorry for this lady. She said, my husband now has macular degeneration. Do you know anything about that? 
22 years we've been living with macular degeneration at my house. I said, I do know a little. I said, but I will tell you this. I do feel like in my heart that you can get help. She said, well, he's got plenty of money. My mother left him a lot of money. She said, so there's no problem. He could get to hire somebody to clean this. And I think in my heart, Harold and I are probably the poorest people on that street because we give everything away. But I think in my heart that some of these people could do better if they were just pushed this far, you know. And like I talk, try to talk to my neighbors, and I know y'all tired of hearing me and you're ready to go home, but that's okay because I know I love you too. <laughs> and, you know, Ms. Natalie's Jess, husband is used to me. If Ms. I, Jess, if I, I love you. Problem, but... I call him. I love you. We got to get going on this. No, I know you have, but I okay. want you to kind of understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this to be a rude or nasty person, but I feel like in my heart that maybe if we could just communicate with people. And I don't live in DeKalb County, so I don't care what happens in DeKalb County. I care about Loganville, Georgia. Okay, so if so I think where we're at is this, I'd like to make a recommendation we vote on, and the recommendation would be that we do not at this time add staff to Tim's department. I would agree with that. Okay. So I guess I'd like to make that motion we're not going to add staff. The, the recommendation back to the council is that we're not going to add staff to the department, or we don't recommend to, rather. Okay. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. I was going to touch on what Janice said. I spoke to you about it when she talked about the encouragement. Would you mention mm -hmm. we do the cleanup and it's coming up this weekend? Mm -hmm. Could we look at doing a cleanup quarterly instead of once a year? Yeah. We do that quarterly. Yeah, I'll, I'll include you in it. Yeah, I, I got a church coming in. Uh, yeah, what well, she's talking about oh. is that what we're doing Saturday. Do that once a quarter to give folks. Uh, we only do that once a year. I, I just Absolutely. feel like if people had a better opportunity other than once a year that they could take the big trash off. So I had spoken oh, to Lisa dump. about that, and that might go with what Miss Janice said. They don't the dump day. Dump day. That's yes. what I'm trying to say. Dump day. Can we look at doing that quarterly? Maybe y'all can talk about that. Robbie, Robbie Schwartz, I think, is heading that up, isn't it? Somewhere. Somewhere. I think it's a great idea. Would you Would you be also interested in doing a community cleanup? Because we we do those. I'll I'll let you know. We we got one coming up with the church. We'll partner up with them. That's, that's fine. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'd like to make the motion to make the recommendation back to council that we will not add new staff to code enforcement. And everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, so the motion passes 3-0. and All right, next on the list is the R22 Overlay District, and quite frankly, there is nothing to discuss on that unless you guys have something. All right, next is planning and zoning class. So I'd ask Danny, this is probably pre-COVID, he started working on this putting together a class for the public to attend, um, basically just to answer, question and answer session for how does planning and zoning work? So he's been working on that now that things are getting back to normal, it's looking like that might happen. So if you wanna give us an update on where we are. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. so Councilman Newberry asked me to, to do a class uh, similar, for some of y'all may recognize 101 that we did back in 2000 and I don't know, one maybe. So, but she wanted to have a non-city employee or representative come and speak because you know what we see about their trust issues with us which i don't know why but we contacted um tim cbiog or uh, chris Vincent institute who yeah. does classes for elected officials for people like tim to come out and maybe do a 30-minute presentation answer questions well she will but it, it's extremely expensive I think it was thirty eight hundred dollars for her to come. Thirty four twenty for, for thirty people. Or yeah, eighteen. 30, eighteen, I'm sorry, eighteen, and then it was a hundred and ninety dollars per, per person. person after that. So we were looking at just for thirty people five thousand or so dollars. I don't think we need to spend that money on that. I think Tim, myself, can handle code enforcement uh, planning development and tell you what the law is. You may not like it. But that's the law. And I've never, I can't say never lied, but 
I have never told a citizen something that wasn't true. I lied to my mama and daddy, but <laughs> but not. I professionally do not lie. You may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you all the truth. I've always done that. Um, so Lisa would like to do a class, so we're looking at maybe end of May, hosting a class. I want to do it in person and possibly do it YouTube. Um, I know there's some people that still prefer to stay at home, which is fine. Um, they can hear it. And if they want to ask some questions, they can email us prior, and we'll answer them. But I'd like to see people in here and just have a class, and I think educate the public would solve some of these issues that we have about development, what we can and can't do, because the big one's like, you know, why we keep lying on chicken? Well, we, we don't control that. We cannot control that. Um, a restaurant, what restaurant comes, what restaurant doesn't come. If it's zoned for it, they can come. Um, we do regulate some businesses, liquor stores, adult entertainment, but as far as restaurants, we don't regulate what type of restaurant comes. And I think if they understood that, they would understand why. If they understood denying someone the constitutional right to use their property in the best use by state law, by federal law, it would solve some of this stuff. If Janice wants to rent her house out, that's nobody's business but Janice and whoever she's renting to. It's not the city or not Winnett County's business. I think they would understand that better. So that was some of the topics that we would like to discuss and just, you know, people would ask questions. Hey, I want to know why y'all do this, why you don't do this, and just be frank and answer them. But, you know, it could be a long class. So we would like to do maybe an <laughs> hour and a half. And if we have to do another session, I work here Monday through Monday, from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. Monday through Monday. I'm never, I'm never off. They like the dog. Back pain. <laughs> so, but, you know, Lisa and I have been talking about this, gosh, two years. Mm -hmm. Doing another one-on-one -on -one class. It, it'll probably spill over to other departments, but I think planning – especially since the development downtown became an issue. I think that's be the best topic to start off with, and we'll go into finance all the way to public safety, all the way to the treatment plan. Yep, and I think it serves a good sign that we want to be transparent. Okay, thank you, Dan. Any questions on that? Okay, well, I don't think we have any further business to handle. Does anybody have any feedback or comments from the audience? Nope. Okay, well, then I'd like to make the motion, the motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that passes 4-0.